Welcome back, let's get right to it, shall we? So I am in R and I'm going to start by loading the exercise underscore data data set. And then at that point, I'm gonna create an object called mod, which is just gonna store the linear model that I'm gonna create. And then I'm gonna use the R command LM because remember what I said? I said in order to actually assess the assumptions, we have to run the model first, but don't trust the estimates. There's a function in the Pfeiffer package called visualize that allows us to assess these assumptions. So I'm going to look at weight.loss tilde therapy dot data equals exercise underscore data. And then now I'm going to use the command visualize mod. And then I can say plot equals all, which is going to give me a visual of the graphic of interest as well as the residuals, or I could just choose to do the residuals. I'm gonna go ahead and do all. And if we run that, we get these three graphics. So in the top left is the visual representing our analysis, is the visual representing our analysis, the behaviorist on the left, the cognitive on the right. And that's the same sort of graphic that would be produced if we use Flexplot. So all is good there. So what does this mean? The behaviorists uh, tend to, those in the behaviorist condition tend to lose more weight than those in the cognitive condition. And approximately the same spread within each group, although we'll be able to see that a little bit better with the SL plot. And then now if we were to look at the histogram of the residuals, these residuals look approximately normally distributed. They ain't perfect, uh, but they're pretty good. And we got some uh, skewness on the left side a little bit, but um, you know, it's, it's bumpy and that's what you would get with actual, simu or actual data here. And then in the bottom right, we have the SL plot. Remember S stands for spread, L stands for location. And this is the tool that we use to assess the assumption of homoscedasticity. And again, what we're looking for is that the regression line fit for that is relatively flat. And lo and behold, look at that, it is. And by the way, the individual data points, so the fitted means what is each person's predicted value and these have been jittered. So the left setting and the right setting represent the behaviorist and the cognitive groups. And each of them, uh, no surprises, have the exact same fitted value because they all have the exact same score on X. Or I should say all those in the behaviorist condition have the exact same X value and all those in cognitive uh, group also have the exact same X value. So of course their predicted weight loss value is gonna be the same. And so that's what is shown on the y-axis and on the x-axis is the absolute value of the residuals. And we see that as x changes, we are not having more spread. So that's good. So from this, we have basically met the assumption of normality. We've met the assumption of homoscedasticity independence. We'd have to look outside the data. Are there some sort of clustering effects going on here, which there aren't. And there is no need to assess the assumption of linearity because remember that you can always fit a straight line between two data points. The linearity assumption doesn't apply with categorical predictors. So we good. Yay, now I'm going to actually read in a data set called the NSDUH data set. And very briefly, what this is, is this is a data set that contains something like 40,000 observations um, and it stands for the National Survey of Drug Use and, Al or Drug Use and Health, I'm sorry. And it is, um, it is a feder federally funded data set that allows us to see different relationships between drug use and mental health and that sort of thing. So I have loaded in the NSDUH data set, and here, let me teach you a new function, nrow, NSDUH, that stands for number of rows, so 41,671. And to speed things along for you, I'm gonna show you one thing real quick. So I'm gonna create an object called D, which is NSDUH. If I were to run that alone, I would just duplicate the NSDUH data set and put it in an object called D but I'm gonna say open bracket one through a thousand. I'm sorry, a thousand, not a hundred. And what that tells me is um, D is an object 
comprised of the first 1,000 rows of the NSDUH data set. And the reason I'm doing that is because, again, um, with 41,000 observations, depending on your computer, it may crash. So I'm just gonna make sure that things don't crash and that things go smoothly for you. So now with that, I'm going to use the exact same commands I did before. Well, actually, let me go head D. So these are the variables that are of interest. And what I want to do is I want to look at uh, the relationship between health rating and impairment. So there's this variable right here, HUDAS, which is some sort of measure and impairment. Apparently, I don't know how to spell. Made that mistake like a year ago and I still haven't fixed it. So we are going to create a model, which is LM HUDAS.impairment tilde health dot rating and then data equals D and that's going to run the model and then now using the same command as before I can say visualize mod and that produces this graphic so I'm first going to left look at the flex plot style graphic on the top left and what that tells me is that impairment is highest among those who are poor in health and then those who are unfair are second highest in impairment. So it actually matches what my intuition says it should should happen. So the more the higher your health rating, the less impaired you are by your psychological distress or whatever it is. But at the same time, it looks like we've got some serious problems with homoscedasticity and group imbalances and that sort of thing. Top right, we see the histogram of the residuals and that just looks cray cray. That is absolutely nuts. My goodness! This is the exact sort of thing that we're looking for and we're looking to avoid. So we have some severe skewness and definitely not symmetrical. So this tells us that we have some serious problems with the normality assumption, which is probably gonna screw everything up. Bottom right, we have the uh, residuals. And again, we're looking for a flat line and we clearly do not have that. So those who are um, of excellent health, I believe that's the fitted value for excellent health. Um, they have on average more spread or we have more uncertainty about their prediction than those who are in poor health. Or maybe it's, let's see. Oh, the fitted value is high. Okay, I'm sorry. This is the poor health because uh, the fitted value right here is a 12, which is about what that is right there. So these are the people in poor health. We are more uncertain about those who are in poor health than we are about those who are in excellent health. So in summary, we've violated the assumption of normality and we violated the assumption of homoscedasticity. And the way the data are formatted right now is it is treating the health rating as categorical. So it's not going to assess the assumption of linearity. But let's go ahead and look at another example where we do look at the assumption of linearity. So now we are going to look at, just gonna copy that and then paste that down here. But instead of health rating, we're gonna go MI, and MI stands for mental illness. And so we are going to look at a um, model that tries to model impairment as a function of mental illness. And so if we were to do the same thing again, so in the left most top left, we have um, a scatter plot and we don't really need the residual dependence plot at this point, but we're gonna use it anyway. And this tells us that, yeah, we got some serious problems here. Um, that function, that lowest line is definitely not straight. So it would be very unwise for us to assume that it is straight. And here's the residuals. Again, those look super wonky, super bad. And then the residual dependence plot, again, that just residualizes this relationship. It fits a straight line here and then plots the fit against the residuals to help us better identify whether there is any curvilinearity present or any sort of patterns left in the data. And we certainly have massive problems here. Notice that that lowest line uh, picks up that curvilinearity that was here. And then also SL, again, we become more uncertain or the line goes up. Again, we can become more uncertain for higher fitted values. So we are violating the assumption of homoscedasticity here.
And like I said before, we do not have the time to uh, figure out how to fix these problems. What we're gonna end up doing in the multivariate class is using general linear models. See the link in the description. But hopefully that has given you a brief taste and you feel comfortable using R to look at the visuals that give you the diagnostic information about linearity, homoscedasticity, those sorts of things. Until next time.